I made this light a while ago to use on my camera gantry to give me extra light right on the subject where I need it. And I've really come to rely on it a lot. I really like the quality of the light that comes out of it. The only, well, there are two problems that I have with it, and that's that it's uh, a lot bigger than it could be, I think. And also, it doesn't have a switch. I originally made it so that it would just plug into the battery that I have on the back of the gantry. So I've got this connector on here that just plugs in. And on the surface, that seems convenient, but really it's a hassle because you've got to hunt for the cord because it's hanging down or it's tangled up and stuff. Better to just plug it in and have a switch to turn it on and off. Another thing is this has come loose on the inside a little bit, so sometimes the light will flick off right in the middle of a shot. And that's not a good thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this apart and I'm going to rebuild it. It's not a whole lot to taking it apart. This lens slips out. And in here you can see all of the LEDs. And they're spaced about three quarters of an inch apart. And they take up the entire surface of this piece of wood. That's true, but... I think that they can be compacted in there a little bit better. Okay, to begin, I'm just going to pull these strips off the plywood. Hopefully it'll come off in one piece without damaging them. What I wound up doing here, if you watch the other video on my main channel, is I glued these down with construction adhesive because the glue, that uh, or the double-sided tape actually, that these come with wasn't doing the trick. And as you can see, the construction adhesive really works a lot better. Now that I've got all the LEDs stripped out of there, I can finish knocking this apart because I want to reuse this frame for the new light. I'm not going to reuse this back panel. I've got something else for that. A sheet of uh, aluminum roof flashing here. This is actually bigger than I need, but I figure I can lay everything out on here and then cut this down to size afterwards. Okay, I've straightened out the piece of aluminum as much as I can here. And I've got my <laughs> snake's nest of LEDs laid out. Here's the end with the plug on it. I was looking at that and I think what's happening here and why it's getting intermittent contact is just how cheap these things are. So I'm going to replace that with a plug that'll be on the outside of the uh, frame. So I'll just be able to plug the cord right in. There'll also be a switch in there to turn it on and off. So I'm going to remove this completely. And then I'm going to lay out the LEDs on this panel and try to make the layout as compact as I possibly can. I don't have a problem with the panel being as wide as the old one. I just don't want it to be as tall. There's still some sticky stuff on the back of these that will kind of hold it down to the aluminum. But I've got the tape there just to make sure that these don't move while I'm laying it out. Okay, I've got them all laid out here and I'm happy with this. I think they're close enough. I've certainly reduced the size of the panel quite a bit. Now I'm going to glue them down and I'm going to have to leave it until that glue dries. I'm going to use construction and ease of again. And rather than use it in the big tube, I put some in a Ziploc bag here and I've cut the corner off, almost like piping out icing or something like that. And I'll just squeeze some underneath each of the strips, just in dabs. I don't want to glue the whole thing continuously because I don't think it's needed. And then, like I said, I'm going to have to wait until this dries, probably overnight. It is the next day, and I took the tape off. I got everything cleaned up here. And what I'm doing right now is I'm marking out the size of the panel so that I can cut it down to size. I'm just going to use scissors for that. That's the beauty of this aluminum flashing and you can cut it with just about anything. I'm going to daisy chain the strips together in parallel. So I've cut these short pieces here and stripped the insulation off. And now I'm just going to twist the ends together in this Z pattern like this and then solder those together and that way I'll connect each strip individually. I'll do all the positive tabs first and then after that I'll do all of the negative tabs in the same way. I just need to finish soldering the rest of these on. I just got to make sure I'm soldering on the right pad. 
not get confused. I'm using a flux pen to make the solder flow better. I want to add too much extra solder to the pads. There's already enough there. Okay, I've got the wiring all finished. I need to put the switch in first, but I left this lead on here on the plug so that I could test it to make sure it was all wired correctly and it was all lighting up. And I found I had a problem, so I had to put a jumper in across here. I guess there's a broken trace inside the end of this short run of LEDs here, but the jumper fixed that. The next thing I need to do is wire in the switch and then I can cut the frame parts to the right length so that I can drill the holes for the power jack and for that switch. The switch that I have here is very small. It's a push button one. And I'm just going to drill a hole for that in the side there and then I'm just going to glue that in with hot melt glue. It's really hard to solder when you have to try to film it as well. So I'm going to clean this up after the camera's off. And then once again, I'm just going to use hot belt glue to hold this jack in as well. So that's it for the wiring and all that. All I need to do is put it together. I'm just going to use hot melt glue to glue in the side pieces first. Uh, just a dab in the middle. Basically just to hold them in place until I can get the ends put in. But I've also got to cut the bezel for the front of the diffuser and fit that in. I put some glue in the corners here and I'm just going to fire in a couple of pins. The same way I did with the original just to hold it together until the glue sets. I gotta do a little bit of wire management just to get them tucked into the corners there so they won't be in front of the LEDs. I'm just gonna use hot melt glue again to hold those in place. I got the diffuser cut down to size and slipped it in. And now I wanna put the other end on. Just gonna get some glue on the miters. And I'll do the same as I did on the other end. I'll drive in a couple of pins to hold it until the glue sets. After I got the panel itself back together, I added a bracket to the back so I could mount it back up on the gantry. It's a lot smaller, it's a lot brighter, and certainly a lot less likely that I'll walk into it this time. Mm -hmm.